Hey y'all, I'm back. So you have never seen content like this for me before. You might not ever again, depending on what happens, but we are in the Portland Grand Hotel in San Diego. It's known for being haunted. Specifically in 309, we've also heard that one of the rooms in the 200s is also known for having activity. We have never done anything like this. I don't know what's gonna happen, um, but we are gonna stay in 309 tonight and see if we get any activity. Uh, so, we're gonna head up there now. So, we're headed up to the third floor right now. Creepy old feeling elevator. Oh my god. I've heard about this, but that is so much creepier in person. So we're about to enter our room, room 309 at the Horton Grand Hotel. Um, because this room is known for being haunted, um, people have said that sometimes when you go to put the key in, it'll light up green, but it's like someone has deadbolted the door. So hopefully it doesn't happen, but we'll see. Room 309. So now that we're in room 309, I wanted to give you just a little bit of the history of the room and who resided here. So there are a couple of spirits that supposedly um, are known to be seen in this hotel in general. There was a woman named Ida, who I think she is seen more on the second floor um, or on third floor. But um, the man that resided in here was um, a man named Roger Whitaker, and he was kind of known as a gambler. And um, the story goes something along the lines of he was gambling and didn't make good on his bets, and somebody shot at him, and he was bleeding. He made his way up into this room, room 309, and he actually went to go hide in an armoire just like this. I don't think this is the original one from what we were told, but he went to hide in an armoire just like this and they found him and shot him. Um, they shot through the armoire and he died. So even though he was a um, murderer in this hotel, um, he isn't necessarily known as like a negative spirit. The thing about Mr. Whitaker is that he is really more known as being like a prankster. So you will have a stack of coins or have a pile of coins laid out on a table and you'll come in and your coins will be neatly stacked up. And um, he's been known to you know, touch a woman's hair a little bit, things like that. Um, pretty harmless stuff, but definitely uh, could be a little spooky, I think. So we'll see. I don't know if we're, we're going to get anything in here, um, but we'll see. We're going to try out some stuff we've never done before and um, just see if anything happens. We did already have kind of a weird thing happen um, when we had the bags dropped off earlier. Uh, Wes came in. I, didn't, I chose not to come in with him at first, but he got the bags in here and... Um, I didn't have a key. Wes had the key and made it into the room and dropped some stuff off. And the key just kind of disappeared. And it's been a couple of hours now since we got here and we still haven't found that key. And he didn't go anywhere but in this room with the key. So not really sure what that's all about, but it could be Mr. Whitaker pranking us. So um, I have a feeling there could be things like that could, that could continue to happen while we're here, but we're only here for a night. So hopefully not too, anything too crazy is going to happen, but, um, yeah, that's it for now. We're actually going to go do, um, a haunted tour. We're probably going to get a little bit more history on that as far as the city and things like that. But, um, yeah, so if I get anything else interesting on that tour, I'll definitely share that on this as well. Hey y'all. So, um, quick little update. So we've been hanging out in the room um, all night. I was planning to do all these cool things and um, try to do different forms of communication, maybe through um, asking questions with flashlights. And um, we brought like a spirit box with us. And um, 
I don't know. I just feel really uneasy. And since I've never done anything like that, I, I don't know that I fully feel comfortable trying all of those methods right now. Um, I know that's kind of disappointing because obviously, you know, people want to know that there are things and, um, to be honest, I feel like I'm not comfortable because I do feel a heaviness in this room and I just want to make sure that I'm in the right headspace before I try to purposefully open up a line of communication potentially with anything else beyond like my immediate um, understanding or whatever. Um, it's kind of confusing to be honest. Like I feel really weird that I feel this way. I feel really disappointed that I feel this way. We are attempting to stay in the room tonight. Um, we did go do like a, a local like ghost tour and we actually brought the group into the room, um, which I think they appreciated and, um, the tour guides seem to really appreciate too. Um, but honestly, like, even though nothing has technically happened, I have just felt really uneasy in this room. I've been feeling all night like I've had like something mildly touching me. I feel like my back has been touched about five or six times at this point. Nothing like intimidating um, necessarily. Um, nothing threatening, anything like that, but just I feel really uneasy being here um, in general. And so I just don't know that I'm quite in the headspace to explore just yet. I may change my mind in a little bit um, before the night's up, but um, right now it's getting close to like 3 a.m. and I'm just still feeling like an uneasiness. So um, yeah, it's, it's disappointing, um, but I'm also wanting to not be stupid. I definitely uh, just want to make sure I'm in the right space and I don't feel like I am right now. I'm feeling just really, um, I'm not scared per se. I'm just feeling uneasy and a little bit anxious and, um, I'm feeling really jumpy over little things and, um, I just don't really want to hype up anything that I'm feeling right now. And I kind of just feel like I intentionally, um, uh, you know, playing with devices or not playing, but you know, using devices that could possibly pick up something. I just, I just want to make sure that I am trying to be level headed about these things. And, um, I, I definitely, I, I do believe there's something to it. And so I just want to be careful. So, um, I think I'm going to end for now. Um, this is the only night we were going to stay. So that kind of sucks. Um, I really, really hope that maybe I'll get brave enough to maybe try something, um, out just to see, um, if we can get any sort of reaction or response, but I'm just not feeling comfortable doing it. And like, I'm trying to stick to my gut instinct on it. Um, but yeah, you know, we did bring flashlights. We brought a spirit box. We brought some things that could, you know, possibly trigger things if we, if we brought them out and, um, just not ready. Um, you know, we are going to be going to some other hotels, um, over the next few days. So maybe I'll, um, feel differently going into some of these other locations, but, um, yeah, there's definitely just a heaviness and almost maybe like a sadness feeling in here in a sense. Like, again, I don't, I don't feel scared. I just feel uneasy. Um, uh, and I think it maybe is just the nature of the history of this hotel. Um, whole experience so far. The hotel has been great. Uh, like I said, nothing crazy has really happened, but I definitely feel like something is trying to feed off of my nervousness and I don't really want to give it that kind of energy either. So, um, yeah, I know this seems silly probably, um, especially to people that maybe don't believe in these types of things, but 
I'm skeptical, um, but I'm open and I do feel like something is off in here and I'm trying to honor my feelings and not invalidate that. And I'm also not trying to brush it off. And so I really just... I'm just going to stick with my gut tonight, y'all. Um, we may try again in the morning, um, you know, during daylight and not so tired to, uh, but we'll see. So, um, anyway, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Hey y'all. Um, so we're about to try to go to bed, but, um, you know, I originally said we weren't gonna maybe record anymore or, um, really do any of like the communicating methods that, um, we originally planned to do. And I finally just kind of got the feeling that it was going to be okay and that we should like give it a go. So we pulled out the spirit box and Wes, do you want to like explain to them what the spirit box is and like how it works? Sure. The spirit box is just a radio device. It scans through radio frequencies and spends a small amount of time on each one. And sometimes that small amount of time, a word can come through and spirits or entities or whoever can use those words to communicate with us and send us signals and messages and answer questions and things like that. And that's what we were trying to do. Yeah. So we, we really didn't ask a lot of questions because, um, things started to come through that I didn't kind of even feel like I needed to ask questions. I, I kind of got the feeling from, some of the responses we were getting just in general, um, that it was just trying to communicate with us and let us know that there's something to all of this. And so like, tell them some of the things that we heard. Yeah. So some of the words that did come through that we heard, we heard some normal words like morning and car. We heard one voice that said a uh, gut instinct it sounded like, and then it sounded like uh, follow it. Um, I really, really hope that maybe I'll get brave enough to maybe try something, um, out just to see, um, if we can get any sort of reaction or response, but I'm just not feeling comfortable doing it. And like, I'm trying to stick to my gut instinct on it. Mm -hmm. uh, we heard that. Yeah. And those kind of were like back to back, which made me think like, you know, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm trusting my gut instinct and following it and so which is why we you know we decided to pull out the spirit box because i felt comfortable and and i felt pretty safe to do it and try it um and put boundaries on like the types of questions we asked and things like that and so that was that felt like that was like validation like you're doing it's okay to do this um but tell them what else though because yeah. then it got weird then it got weird it's uh we heard a couple of separate times that it said, that that it said Lindsay's name, her actual name. Yeah, it says Lindsay it twice. twice. Um, I heard it and he heard it. And and we can't tell if it was trying to communicate with her directly or... But it did say, well, no, because at one point it said, it said my name and it said believe. Okay. okay. Um, and so I think that it was either telling me to believe or telling me that it knows I believe. Not really sure... Um, we did hear, I think, wasn't there the name Henry or, no, it wasn't Henry. What was the name? Like a Toby or something. Toby or. Gary or something. something. something but short like we, that. We had a few, like, names come through and we, we kind of wonder, um, you know, are these names maybe attached to some of the history in the hotel or something like that, which I thought was interesting. I don't know. Not sure. We also did hear a lot of Spanish. Um, which is maybe not surprising since we are in California. We're not very far from like Tijuana and places like that. So um, maybe there was something to that as well. It's kind of hard to know. And then there were a couple times where like there were um, whispers where we couldn't quite decipher, but we could tell it said something. Um, we didn't really last very long before I decided to cut out because um there was just a, a particular voice that came through that was kind of like loud and booming and felt very not scary, more like authoritative. And I just wasn't really comfortable with it. Oh, that was another one. I think we didn't, we hear the word police. I okay. I thought I heard the word police at one point. 
Um, I'm not positive on it, but, um, and it, it is kind of weird because it does do static and things like that. And so it's kind of hard to hear sometimes or it say, it'll say things really quickly or, um, really delayed. So like you would ask a question that would take a minute before it would even like say anything back at all. And sometimes it wouldn't say anything. Um, we didn't really test it too, too far just because like I, didn't want to test beyond my comfort zone. Like I don't want to test anything. Um, we definitely put limits on it. Like you can't, when it said you, uh, follow, I, we definitely put up a boundary of, of, you cannot follow us. You have to stay here. You cannot follow either of us. And so, um, I mean, Wes, what do you, what do you feel from this? Like legitimately? Cause I know you're a skeptic. Yeah, definitely skeptic. I definitely felt like we got some genuine responses to some of the things we're saying. The thing, the fact that it knew her name, and we didn't said say it multiple anything. times. There's no way. There's no way. My name's not yeah. on the reservation. We ha he hadn't said it, so it's not like it can hear and yeah. and respond based on. There's definitely that something heart. to that. Mm -hmm. and, the fact that it said it twice told yeah. me it was trying to get my attention. Yeah, but I mean, when so, you um, so started a skeptic, I'm. A little less of a skeptic now, but and I'm still, definitely still skeptic. I'm definitely less of a skeptic. I mean, you hear something like that, say your name, and it definitely uh, yeah, because he didn't say my name. Yeah, so. uh, it, it definitely leaves an impact. Um, I don't feel scared. Um, it's actually kind of cool, but um, it was a little frightening in the moment. Um, I do wish we had recorded, but. Um, you know, I, again, I wanted to be authentic and I really just didn't think we would get anything. So I didn't really record. Um, oh, so the one thing I did want to show y'all before I forget, um, we have been wearing these, um, obsidian, no, yours, oh, yours is on your other oh, wrist. Um, so, um, this is too big. <laughs> so we're both wearing, um, obsidian bracelets, which are meant to be for protection. Um, I'm just superstitious a little bit enough that I feel like it doesn't hurt to have those things. I don't necessarily rely on them to protect me. Um, I would like to think, you know, for me personally, like as a Christian, like my God is bigger than anything. And, um, th this can't hurt me if I don't let it. Yeah. It, it was a really interesting experience. I, I am not a skeptic <laughs> after that, to be honest. Um, we may try to get in some of the other hotels now that I've finally like done it, but um, we'll see. So we're going to Hotel... Which one is it tomorrow? Hotel Del Coronado tomorrow. Yes, yeah, so we're going to Hotel Del Coronado tomorrow. Um, it's like right down the road from here, basically. Um, and then we are... We've got one other one. Let's see. Roosevelt. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to go back to L.A. and go to Hotel Roosevelt. Um, and then we're going to end our trip um, with a non-haunted hotel. Um, and so we're going to be, like, in a, a Westin um, out in Pasadena um, because we're going to go to the live shows for America's Got Talent, uh, which is going to be pretty cool. So, um, yeah, this has been an interesting little trip. You know, this is our 15-year anniversary and so we are just kind of celebrating and doing all the things, apparently. Pretty, pretty wide variety yeah. of activities this week. But uh, anyway, you guys, um, sorry I didn't really capture anything legit on camera. But just know, like, if you ever decide to come visit this hotel, definitely think there is something to room 309. So yeah. anyway, um, if you guys have any questions, shoot me a comment down below. And we'll see you soon. Hey, y'all. So we're back. We survived the night in 309. Um, so, you know, originally I wasn't going to do any of the communication. Um, but as you've already seen in some of the other clips, we did um, talk about some of the things that we've done. Um, so we did the spirit box and got some responses where my name was mentioned and we got some some answers to some questions that we asked that we felt like aligned with the questions we were asking um and then after i recorded the last clip um, where i talked about that um we decided to 
recently with the flashlights. Um, and so, Wes, do you want to explain the flashlights? Yeah, the flashlights are just regular mini mag lights you can get at like Home Depot. And you just, you get them, you twist them to like right before they can turn on and you just leave them sitting like that. Don't touch and them. And then if any extra energy is put into the flashlight, it's able to make the connection and turn on. And then when that energy goes away, the flashlight can turn off and then that can be used as a yes, no uh, communication with something that can put energy into those flashlights. Yeah. So we decided to give that a try. Um, we weren't touching it. I mean, there was multiple times where there's no way that it could have been anything we were doing um, to make it go off other than it was responding. It was I responding. Mean, it was definitely responding. Um, and I found it interesting that it, he, anytime he would ask a question, it really didn't respond. Yeah, it only responded like, like two or three of my questions. Twice, yeah, but it was responding to almost all almost of mine. all of yours. Uh, we were, we were trying to figure out if the spirit we were communicating with in the spirit box was the spirit that's supposed to inhabit this room, Roger Whitaker, and we asked the flashlights, and they said that no, it wasn't that. It wasn't him. Uh, so we asked a few more questions about was it this or was it that, and the response we finally got was when we asked is was the spirit we were communicating with something that was sent to protect us on this trip that we're having mm -hmm. and we got a yes and we got a yes so we think that it was either a family member or a friend that knows that we're going to be on this trip and in potentially Maybe. vulnerable situations uh sent something to protect us whether that be uh, uh a friend we have live now or a family member we have that's passed or, or maybe even like a spirit guide of some sort some, something maybe. like that i'm not really sure um again that's that's kind of in the realm of i'm not sure how i feel about those things um but we definitely got multiple consistent answers in regarding that it was a good thing it was a protective thing so mm -hmm. um i actually felt pretty comfortable by the end of it i mean there was a point where we were not really getting responses like we were in the beginning and so we kind of ended it and um yeah i i, I don't feel like this place is bad i definitely think it's heavy and has a lot of energy and things like that but i don't think it's negative yeah and, I agree. I agree. and i mean the thing is is i went into this nervous and so I was very intentional on the questions I would ask. <clears throat> and um, I did get touched on the shoulder and the back probably about six times last night, um, just kind of throughout the night. And so I finally got to the point where I voiced, you cannot touch me, you cannot go with me, you need to stay here. Um, and you can't touch Wes or anyone that I love either. And so um, just know that like, if you are going to get into these types of things, make sure you're protecting yourself or at least doing um, mindful things with it. Um, so again, we have the, the protective bracelets we wore. Um, I didn't let the questions go too far off the rails, you know, in the things that we were asking, we weren't asking questions that were like inviting anything negative we were very intentional on <clears throat> saying nothing negative can come in things like that uh, <clears throat> and so we slept good last night after yeah. after we were done with everything yeah. I, I was never i never felt like i got woken up or disturbed or anything like that um there have been some weird like footsteps above us but i'm sure it's because there's somebody in the room above us and yeah. not anything <laughs> else but um that's been pretty much it so um nothing too crazy it was definitely a new experience and um definitely made me a little bit more open-minded to the possibility of there being something more beyond like our immediate understanding just because of how insistent when we were asking questions it was like it wanted to communicate with me between it the spirit box saying my name twice and then the questions that I was asking versus the questions he was asking, I was getting way more consistent responses. So I, I personally feel like there is more to it um, on some level, you know, um, 
how much power there is, I don't know. But mm-hmm. um, and even right now, I'm hearing things outside the door. So um, anyway, I mean, what did you think? Uh, so interesting experience. I think we learned a lot. I think we we got and we got an experience without having a negative, bad, mm-hmm. demonic experience. So that that was good. I already super, super duper didn't want that. Yeah, no, yeah, no, me yeah. Either. So um, yeah, so we're now we're heading out from here, and we're gonna be heading to the Hotel Del Coronado, which is also a haunted hotel. But we're not gonna be staying in the actual room uh, or the rooms that were said to be haunted, but we are going to this hotel and it is said to have had a lot of activity. So we'll see what happens. Um, I am going to do better about hopefully setting up cameras and things like that to um, actually maybe capture some of the things that we've been doing. I know we didn't really show it, um, but that was just because like I wanted to see it for myself and I wanted to, um, I didn't want to bring too much into, I guess the situation. And like overdo it in a sense. So I wanted to just get a feel for it for myself before we did anything like that. So anyway, uh, well, we will check in with you all soon. Bye.